There was a so-called official portrait of King Charles released today, and I couldn't help but have a very strong opinion about why this is one of the worst paintings I've seen. The portrait was commissioned to Alastair Barford by the Illustrated London News and will feature on the front cover of his special coronation edition. Some of you have already replied on Twitter that I'm being too rough, that you like the painting, but I'm in a moral obligation, being an artist, to explain why this is not a good representation of the subject. And to keep things fair, I will be using as a reference the portrait of Queen Elizabeth II by the same artist, and this is a masterful work. A portrait of this kind needs to go further than simply depict the person. It has to breathe his or her personality using impeccable technique. Let's say like those depressing drawings of Harry at the London court. Welcome back, my royal rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the royal rogue. And I'm going to start highlighting the good in this portrait, which is exactly two things. First one is the likeness, which is one of the hardest things to nail in a portrait and the foundation where everything else is built upon. In terms of likeness, this has 10 points out of 10, hands down. It's almost like a photograph. This is so difficult because you have to not only build the head, but also have all the facial features at the right spots. Notice that I haven't mentioned facial expression, which I will be covering in a couple minutes. It's easy to spot that the artist nailed the Queen's likeness perfectly on her portrait. The second thing that, in my opinion, was perfect in King Charles' portrait was the suit and tie color scheme. The royal blue with the pale pink is an amazing combination that depicts masculine and feminine polarities in perfect balance, which is something every one of us should strive to attain. Sadly, that is where the good news come to an end. I'm gonna tell you what was the first impression that I had when I saw this picture, and it was gloom. Maybe before I look at faces, I look at composition, and in fact, there's one thing that will hit you first than anything else, and that is color. The first problem here is the limited contrast. We should have strong highlights and rather strong shadows as well, or at least what the subject is wearing should allow for that contrast. Notice in the Queen's portrait that her full order of the garter attire allows for that high contrast between light and shadow. High contrast is always related to strong personalities and, by extension, to power. If you have low contrast or not that much of a difference from bright areas and shadows, the result is dull. And that is a concept that is going to pop up in the viewer's mind. And sadly, that's going to be related to the person. In other words, if your portrait looks dull, then you're going to be perceived as dull too. Now, let's talk about the facial expression. And if getting the likeness of the model right is hard enough, even more difficult is getting the facial expression right. Because facial emotion will be the actual representation of the model's personality. This facial expression is going to be frozen in time, so you need to make sure that whichever expression it is, it conveys the emotion that you want the viewer to associate them with. In the case of the Queen, it's a very subtle smile, and I have to give props to the artist. Nailing such subtle expressions is absolute mastery. In this case, I will call it serene excitement, which is a nice description of Queen Elizabeth's personality. The problem with Charles' expression is that the inner eyebrow contraction was exaggerated and it gave him a worried look. What this portrait needed was a thoughtful and compassionate look with more neutral eyebrows. And you can see very good examples in photographs that depict him with the appropriate expression. Now, before we talk about his body language, I want to point out something that can be usually overlooked in any painting, not just portraits. And it's the background. In the case of Queen Elizabeth's portrait, there's first and foremost a richness in colors and layers. I don't know how this video translates to your screen, but I hope you can see the green hues, the violet and sepia tones. Notice that the background's value is not a static. It has lighter and darker areas, but the way these lighter and darker areas are distributed is not random. I've made the higher contrast version here so you can better see how the artist used light and shadow values to enhance the beautiful dance between figure and background. We start with lighter background, then shadows that help contrast with the light of her face, which at the same time contrasts with the shadows of the back of her head, which stand out thanks to another light area of the background, which blends into another shadow area. The difference with King Charles' portrait is that the background is much simpler and it serves as the darker frame so his face pops with light. I'm going to use as an example one of my favorite painters, Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres. In this self-portrait, he's using the same principle, dark background so the face pops thanks to lighting. And he's got quite a few portraits like this, and you can see that in every case it works like a charm. Perhaps one that better mimics King Charles' background is this one, with darkness around the head and a lighter area towards the waist. But there's a problem. In every single example, the background is mostly flat. That helps make the figure pop. 
What happens in King Charles' portrait is that the shadows are not flat. They are circling and oppressing the head. I made a black and white model so you can see that not only the brush strokes, but the shadow values form a dark aura around King Charles' head. And that subconsciously reinforces his worried expression. Okay, you might argue that this particular background helps convey the saying, where is the head that wears the crown? But if we are talking about the coronation, we are talking about the start of an era. And every start should be hopeful and looking forward into the future. Wasn't Charles the one who wanted to modernize the monarchy? And that's my observation in regards to his posture and orientation. We read from left to right, from this point to this point. So forward in time is depicted by an imaginary line that goes from this area of your screen to this area of your screen. So a person that is facing this way is facing forward. In fact, that is a principle that I use in my current video design. I'm facing slightly forward. But what happens with King Charles here? He's facing backwards. Yeah, you can say that he's facing traditions and the past, but if he wants to connect with younger generations, he should be facing where subconsciously for us is forward. Now, regarding his body language, I think it was mostly on point. It is a classic pose from Charles, as you can see in this photo reference. Even the suit is similar, but I have added that yellow marker to depict that the angle that the artist chose for the portrait emphasizes one quality of King Charles' body language that should not be emphasized. And it's a slight tilt of his head forward. And this is something that is part of him that he has been doing since, well, forever. Then you might ask, if this is a quality of the person, then why shouldn't we highlight it? Because there are times to be authentic and your true self, and there are moments when you have to represent the task that is at hand. This is not about Charles in a personal way. This is about the king of the United Kingdom. And I found a photo that was perfect, maybe not in terms of facial expression, but definitely in terms of body language and posture that would have worked much better. So to recap, Dual colors, a worrying facial expression, an ominous background, and foggy contrast. Together with the orientation of the body, the general impression is not the best for a king that is about to be crowned. The artist has the skills. My only explanation to this is that this portrait was rushed. In technical terms, especially the face and the likeness, it was a good job. But a portrait is much more than just likeness. It is body language, skin tones, facial expressions, and color palettes. Yes, you can say that you like this painting. That's okay. I'm just here to remind you that you can enjoy a work of art subjectively, but art can be objectively bad. And the more you learn how to see a work of art, the more you will know why you like some works and you don't like others. My Royal Rogues, remember to share your thoughts in the comments. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And remember, much love and yes.